Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis on Monday, October 13, 2014. Another bloodbath in the market. Friday was a bloodbath right into the 200 period moving average on the daily chart. This is the SPY daily chart. And then today, right through it, <clears throat> down another uh, $3.00. And uh, what was it exactly? Uh, yeah, it was about $3 down today. Uh, it translates to about 30 points in the S&P. Uh, it was actually 31 points in the S&P, and the Dow was down 223. Uh, NASDAQ got hit for 62 and a half. And um, where do we go from here? Well, you know, basically, um, we're getting pretty extended, and um, there's there's a lot of fear out there right now. So Again, I always say two things can happen because two things can always happen. Uh, number one, uh, the market should find some support around 184 to 185. Okay, that's that's my number. And I get that from the weekly chart. Okay, if you go here to the weekly, um, I had this number, this pivot low here, which was 184.96, and I think that's our number, give or take, let's say, 50 cents in the SPY or five points in the S&P. It translates to about 18.50 in the S&P, give or take five points or so. So um, that's where we are, and uh, you know we can get down there in a hurry. We can get down there tomorrow if the if the overnight markets are getting hit real hard. Uh, we can open up way down and and do it tomorrow. I mean, it's a bloodbath out there, and there's a lot of people losing a lot of money. And uh, this is this is the real thing. So um, and so the other thing that can happen is we cut through it and keep going and. Um, you know, this double bottom here on a weekly basis at 173, 174, um, I don't think that's going to happen. You would first stop at this pivot low here, this double bottom from, uh, what is this, from uh, April of this year, and that's at about 181. So um, there's stops along the way, but uh, if, the, if, the, if the selling gets real, real heavy, uh, we can just scale down. I mean, there could be a market crash. Don't discount the fact that there could be a market crash. It happens. Uh, it's going to happen at some point again. It's happened in the past. So just beware. Um, all right. So that's, that's, that's the uh, S&P. You know, I want to take a look at something else because um, this was interesting today. While the S&P was down 1.65%, okay, the IWM, all right, wasn't down that much. Uh, it was down, uh, where is it? Let's see. Uh, let's see. I have it on another chart here. IWM was down... Yeah, it was only down 0.2%. Yeah, I thought so. So, so basically, um, remember I say that there's downside pressure when the small caps lead the market down, but the small caps also lead the market up. Now, I'm not saying that, that the market's finished going down, but what I am saying is this may be, may be a first tell that something's about to shift. And, and that could be a week away, who knows, but uh, we look for signs, and when we see signs, we just note them. Just like last week, I saw a sign in the bond market, and then all of a sudden, the stock market went down. Well, I'm seeing a sign in the uh, IWM, or the Russell 2000 Index, that it wasn't as weak as the overall market today. And if you look at the intraday uh, chart here, you know, here we are uh, this morning, uh, we rallied up a little bit, came down, tried to rally up again, came back down, but we never broke the lows and the other indexes did. You know, just, just to give a comparison, uh, let's go back to the hourly on the SPY and look what happened here. Okay, same intraday chart. We rally up, go down, rally up much, much weaker than the IWM and then just collapse. So there's a difference there. So it's just something we want to note. Okay, we're not going to trade off of it just yet, but we want to note. Uh, okay, so that was the only tell I saw today. Um, you're going to have some bank earnings tomorrow, and they're usually important. You got Citigroup, and uh, you've got Wells Fargo, and um, I think you have J.P. Morgan. Uh, I'm not exactly sure right now. I forgot. But um, you have Intel after the close tomorrow, so that's important. And Intel's really been hammering. You know what? Let me digress for a second. Uh, 
let me just show you Intel for a second because this has just been taken to the woodshed and look at the daily chart okay almost yeah you had some kind of like an intraday flash crash last week in the semiconductors on Friday and then Intel went all the way down to thirty dollars and ninety I'm sorry thirty dollars and fifty cents and then it bounced up but now it's weak again today so here's what I think okay now check this out so if Intel by the time earnings come around let's say tomorrow Intel does not break this low and certainly doesn't close below it but let's say it closes somewhere above this area here halfway to uh, up this candle here um, into earnings now I'm not telling you to do this because it's a very risky play but something to watch so Intel doesn't break this low tomorrow has earnings tomorrow night if that happens uh, I'll bet you that Intel reports whatever they report the earnings to be the market perceives it as positive and sends Intel up it's so beaten down that that usually in options expiration especially when stocks report earnings they usually go the other way so it's something to watch for tomorrow okay just uh, something of note that's all it's, it'll just be interesting to see what happens let's go over to the gold chart and uh, gold was up today and it's interesting because gold right now is at two twelve thirty six forty in the overnight session and it's up a little bit but it closed today at 1230 now now my work tells me that a close today below 1235 okay was negative for gold and we should see down prices tomorrow okay and possibly further than that but we'll see what happens but gold's up in the overnight session so we'll see how that plays out uh, I'm just giving you the benefit of um, what my cycle work uh, my short-term cycle work tells me uh, and it tells me that gold should have some pressure on it going into tomorrow we'll see how that plays out I'm not making a forecast I'm just telling you that that's what I think is gonna happen I'm not trading it. I'm just telling you that's what I'm watching for um, oil okay so here we go with oil here's the USO and um, let's just look at a weekly chart it's a little bit more dramatic and then we'll go back to the daily uh, here's the weekly chart now you're at pretty good support in the USO down here I mean the worst case scenario is down here to thirty dollars and let's say seventy five to eighty cents but um, I don't think we get down there because the price of crude on the November contract right now is eighty five nineteen okay that's as we speak right now um, I have eighty two to eighty two fifty as a dead on bottom for the time being on a daily basis okay in the price of crude on this go around I'm not saying a few months from now we can't be lower I'm just saying on this move um, I would I would see fantastic support in the 82 to 82 50 area um, I don't even know if we get down there I'm just saying that that crude oil doesn't have a lot of downside so if you want to if you if you're looking at some oil stocks oil stocks should have a bounce here when the market bounces and they should really rip higher because they've been so oversold you know let's just take a look at a couple um, Chevron I mean look at this look at this drop right into the uh, on the weekly basis we're into the 200 period moving average okay that this is this is 109.38 we're at 112 I mean in this area there has to be has to be has to be support okay let's just look at uh, Exxon okay same thing you're not into the 200 period moving average but you're pretty damn close to this uh, pivot low here at 89 89 and a quarter uh, you know a dollar dollar and a half dollar seventy five away from that uh, there has to be great support here I mean look at this daily chart it's just been hammered 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 um, some of the MLPs have been hammered um, it just goes on and on and on so um, let's go back to USO because I just want to show you on a daily basis this thing's been hammered and now you're starting to get some you're starting to get some up and down movement during the day it's fighting the downtrend that's that's what's going on here with these tails it's fighting the downtrend you're getting these uh, they're not doji candles but they're 
but they're they're narrow candles and they're fighting the downtrend. So that's why these tails are happening. So one day you're going to get a pop and the oil stocks are going to follow or vice versa. And uh, it's going to be off to the races for a couple, three days at least in the uh, the oil sector, hopefully more. So that's where we stand there. Um, oh, one last thing. I'm going to I'm going to uh, look at the VIX here with you. OK, could you get some more updates in the VIX? Sure, absolutely. Should you? Well, we should be at some resistance here. It never feels like it when we get there. But we're pretty much there. And uh, I mean, for us to break these highs here, OK, certainly on a closing basis, on a weekly basis, there would have to be hell to pay in the markets. And that could happen. But, um, you know, it's a it's a tough one. I mean, this is uh, this is really extended right now and it, it is due for a pullback. And the, that that means that the market would be due for a bounce. But certainly this can go higher and the market can go lower first. But we're getting closer and uh, we should be within you know 25 to 35 points in the s p 250 to 350 points in the dow uh we should be we could be a little farther away in the nasdaq we could be 100 points away in the nasdaq so we'll see what happens but that's my take uh we'll take it one day at a time hope this helps i'm david frost my strategic thanks for tuning in for another episode of common sense market analysis